Hi, welcome everybody to Three Seconds Ahead. My guest today is Ren van der Rist. I hope I've pronounced that correctly, Ren. Um, <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> great. And uh, Ren, um, I met Ren at the, the gym, Sugar Fit is my jiu-jitsu gym. He's a personal trainer there, and he's also spent some time on the mats. He's, he's a budding white belt. I think I've spent one or two uh, occasions rolling with him. Um, nice. And um, I've also observed him as a personal trainer. And what I can say is, is that um, he's dedicated to what he does. He's dedicated to his clients, and they're dedicated to him. And the one Absolutely. thing that sort of the, the word that comes to mind for me is, is you, 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 you tend to have a gentle approach um, and you see the client for who they are. Um, each one, you've got a yes. different regime and you, you challenge them in a different way. So that's how I know you. Um, yes. But for the guests and the people that are, are, are going to be joining us today, um, you know, Ren, where, where does your story begin? How did you end up where you are today? Um, Andy, um I was. I grew up in the eastern suburbs of Joburg. Mm -hmm. uh, went to Kes. Oh. Um, yeah, Kes boy. And, my sons. Um, my sons are there. So that's, yes, I know. I know. Right. It's a. I love it. It's a brilliant school. I loved it. Yeah. I was. I was. I was probably one of the naughtier uh, kids ever to be in Kes, but um, that's probably why I was at Kes. It was. It was just a really good school and played sport there. Um, I've, I've come, I come from quite a sporting background. I, my grandfather was a Springbok rugby player mm -hmm. uh, many, many years ago. And um, I come from quite an athletic background. And um, so, yeah, I was a very good golfer. And um, I had a motorbike accident at 19. Um, and that just kind of put paid to, not that I was planning on being any kind of a professional golfer of any sort, but mm -hmm. just my ability to really do much. And I've actually struggled with, with lower back issues ever since, uh -huh. um, since that motorbike accident. And um, yeah, then traveled um, overseas for a few years after matriculating. Um, didn't, didn't go study immediately. I just, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And instead of rushing into any kind of immediate study and, and just studying something for the sake of it, I spent some time in, uh, abroad, in, abroad in the UK, lived there for a few years, and then came back and my father was like, You're like you need to do something now. I was like, okay, cool. And he said, you need to study. He says, I'll pay for it, but you need to do something now. And then I was like, okay, well, what do I enjoy? And I enjoyed fitness, sports, health, and ended up studying a diploma in exercise science and sports science. And then slowly but surely got into that field and I've been doing it for 16 years now. Wow, well, 16 years. 16 years. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think, um, I mean, what strikes me about that, uh, that um, story that you've given us is that you've, you've kind of been true to yourself because, as yeah. you said at the end, you asked yourself, what do I enjoy? And that's how you got yes. into exercise science. You, um, you've had to face adversity, uh, which was that bike, bike accident, which couldn't have been a great experience, Absolutely. particularly if you enjoyed your golf. Yeah. And we'll explore that a little bit yes. further. I'd quite like to know how, how that challenged you. But um, what I really liked about what you said was is that you didn't rush into anything. You finished high school, you, you went overseas, and you experienced life. And then you came back, and yeah. then... Your dad, like many dads, looked at you and said, yes. <laughs> Ren, <laughs> okay, you've had your fun, yeah. you've gone out and discovered, you need to do something. So yes. that's, so that's that, that, that not rushing into things is, is certainly something that um, I've learned is really, really important because it gives you time yes. to, to understand yourself. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, Definitely. I mean, the, the purpose of these um, discussions that I have with people is really um, focusing on, on the basics. And particularly when you've got to begin again and, and your bike accident was a new beginning for you. Um, oh yeah, definitely. And, and just tell me how, how that impacted you on an emotional level and, and what tools or, or how you managed to, to get yourself through that. Um, Andy, so I was 19. I think it was, I was, um, no, I lied. I, I apologize. I was actually a little bit younger. I was going into my matric, I'm a tricky year. And, you know, my parents got divorced at a young age and stayed good friends, whatever. And, you know, my dad bought me a, a 50cc at the age of 15 or 16. And, uh, you know, he was like, there's your bike. You've got to get yourself to school and back, which was, which was normal. You know what I'm saying? Like, give, give and take. 
because we stayed quite far away. It's like I said, I was in the eastern suburbs of Joburg, um, the case is in Houghton, so it was about a 10k drive, give or take. Anyway, I had that for a couple of years, and then I sold that, and I bought myself a Yamaha DT180. And anyway, I was driving, um, it was December, Jan, I was going to one of my, my, my best friend, his place at the time, and uh, it was just a misty, rainy day, and I was going up, there's a very steep hill up in this valley, and this, this guy's kind of skipped the stop street because he just didn't see me. Anyway, and he drove slap bang into me and I ended up at the Olivelle Clinic with um, a very damaged leg and stuff and I had to operate on that. And um, I was in hospital for a few days, came out and I was actually fine. You know, I had to uh, start my matricular with on crutches and stuff like that, which was a bit of a challenge. And um, yeah, and, and, and the, the leg healed, but what had happened was that I had, a, I had a bit of a pain in my rib. It was my intercostal muscles from the fall, from kind of landing on my back. And I was training at that stage. Um, and our the time frame is a little bit, it was many years ago, so I might get a bit wrong. But I started exercising. And then one day I was doing, I can't remember what I was doing. I think I was doing calf raises or something. And I got this pain down my, my lower back, my upper back, sorry, I should say. And I thought, okay, fine. It was a bit of stiffness. And I woke up the next day and my whole upper back was in a, like, almost in a spasm. Mm -hmm. And that proceeded to move down to my lower back as I was about 21, 22 at this stage and moved down to my lower back. And yeah, it was excruciating. Um, I basically, there it, it came a point where I actually couldn't walk properly. I had to, if I went to a shopping center, I would have to walk from bench to bench and rest for five minutes. And wow. you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sound dramatic, but there actually comes a point and it, I, was, I was a youngster. It was actually a point where, and, and thank God, uh, thank God, I was a youngster. Because I think if this happened to later, when I was older, my mindset might have been a bit different. And like, you know, at one stage I was like, I don't want to live like this anymore. I can't live like this anymore. Mm. Because either, uh, literally, the, you get to a point where you're like, I'm actually ready to kill myself. Because like, I actually cannot deal with the pain. And I'd gone to see a specialist, and they'd done scans and MRIs on my back, and I couldn't really see what the problem was. They could see something in the base of my spine. So they were going to be like, no, listen, let's operate. And my father plays a big role in my life in many strange ways. He was like, you're not touching his back. It's just not going to happen. I think number one, he wasn't willing to pay for it. <laughs> and number two, he was just like, you know, he was just like, that they started that, that you're too young for this type of thing. Let's take you. And he actually took me to a Cairo. Oh, okay. And I was like, you know, and, and, and people have a lot of, have a lot of, well, not negative, but kind of, differing opinions on chiropractors, mm -hmm. but I have to say that he literally saved my life. Uh, my back has never been perfect, but he got me walking and functioning again. Um, I struggle with lower back pain to this day, um, but what I did was ultimately I realized that I've got two choices. I, you know, I can accept the pain and, and kind of use it as an excuse not to do anything, um, but I, I didn't. I, I, I've trained around it. I've trained. I've actually trained my lower back and my glutes, even up to today. You know, just to get them strong and to function properly. And um, yeah, and I, I do. I have. Back, there's some days where I can't tie my shoe. You know, and then it's like the next day it's fine. But I haven't stopped that from training. I haven't stopped. I mean, as you know, I've started jujitsu about a year ago, mm -hmm. um, which was one of the most difficult things I've ever done in my body. It was. It, it, it took my training to a whole different level. I just couldn't believe the impact that it had on me physically mm. it was mm. my body took a lot of strain from it and uh, there were days where I was just like oh, man this is really tough on the body you know I wish I started jits about 25 years ago as well you know so like, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that um, I love I love it and I'm just not willing to stop training for yes. whatever reason maybe jits or anything else um, yeah within reason yeah, I think, I mean, that's, that's a hell of a story. I mean, a pain is a very difficult thing to deal with. I'm glad you mentioned chiropractors. Absolutely. In actual fact, my first guest was um, a friend and a chiropractor. Um, yes. So I'm a big fan because they've been very helpful to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Likewise, I've got a lot of respect for them. And I think mm -hmm. they, they, their work is a bit, um, it's not always um, appreciated. Yeah, I agree. But I think what stands out for me is, is that, uh, first of all, you said you were, you were young, so your attitude was slightly different and you, you yeah. could make a choice. Uh, you, you, yeah. you, I think at this stage, you, you mentioned your dad saying, don't, you're not cutting my son. And you said he did it yeah. because he maybe didn't want to pay. But I think yeah. it sounds to me that you're quite grateful that he was, was he took that Absolutely. stance. Um, Absolutely. But then I think the really powerful thing that you said, which I think is a good message to everybody is, is that, 
you acknowledged the injury and then yeah. you said how can i work around the injury not how's the injury going to dictate my life and that's exactly what you've done so yeah. so i think i mean it's probably a good thing being a personal trainer and someone who's had 16 years experience in in the game so to speak yeah. um i think it's a, probably a good place just to to focus on lower back core exercise what yes. the basics are in that area, the, the kind of things that you do to, to maintain your, your core, your lower back, to, to, to make it pain-free or as pain-free as possible. So possible. What, what, what are the kind of things that you focus on? Just, just the, Absolutely. what do you begin with, you know? You know, Andy, the thing is, um, when it comes to your core, a lot of people think it's about your abs. Yeah. Actually, your core is everything excluding your legs and your arms. So that's your whole torso, it's your upper back, uh, your whole back, your chest, everything. And take away your arms, your legs, and that is basically what they refer to as your core. Okay. And you can go down that road, and it's, and it's a never-ending road. Um, I, I enjoy, I, I, listen, I'm, not a, I'm, I'm a personal trainer. I love training myself. Um, I love training my clients. I'm not a bodybuilder. Yeah. I don't throw crazy heavy weights around. I don't see the need for it, but that's just a personal choice. So yeah. when I say stuff like deadlifts and stuff like that, I'm not talking about trying to lift 500 kilograms mm -hmm. or even 200 mm -hmm. kilograms or even 100 mm -hmm. kilograms off the ground. It's yeah. just it's not functional for me, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of trying to do jits mm -hmm. and everything else. Um, I do a lot of stuff like farmer's walks, which is basically just holding weights and walking. It's got a great metabolic conditioning effect on the body. I do deadlifts. Yeah. I do a lot of uh, TRX um, exercises, um, crunches and that type of thing. Okay. And I do, obviously, my, my coach, Jandre uh, Hubert, yeah. uh, I do uh, Skype classes with him to do our jits, um, you know, just to keep us functional and stuff. And do, we do quite a lot of core work in that. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing I've, I've had to work on, I'm, I'm, a, I'm tall, I'm six foot five, mm -hmm. is strengthening my, 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 my glutes. Mm -hmm. and strengthening my low back my abs are actually quite strong but mm -hmm. my i do battle with my glutes and when it comes to jits for example your your, your a lot of your your ability to do jits comes from your hips mm -hmm. and i've really had to strengthen my hips for that and that's made a big impact on my back mm -hmm. i've had to do some flexibility work my girlfriend and i have heated arguments about the need for <laughs> flexibility and stretch stretching which i just think is totally pointless that's that's kind of really shifts my opinion quite dramatically on on the way of core, core, yeah. core management um yeah. so you mentioned something called T trx uh, i must admit i don't know what that is can you just elaborate on okay. that okay so the trx um system is basically it's 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 actually it was designed by and for the for the united states army so they could train in the field it's mm -hmm. basically just a two two ropes as such i mean just that's just simplifying oh. it really with handles yeah. so it involves using a lot of body weight works so they, they could tie it to a turret of a tank for example and mm -hmm. they could tie it to a roof and you could then mm -hmm. obviously use that as leverage so you'd have the two ropes hanging down mm -hmm. separately with two handles and obviously you can do kind of a lot of body work on that. And then obviously you have two straps just underneath the handles where you can put your feet in. Mm. So it's, it's really great for going to say a plank position and then bringing your knees towards your chest or doing mm -hmm. pikes where you're lifting your, your butt into the air with your legs straight to work the lower abs. Yes. It's really a great functional piece of equipment. Um, so ultimately what's happened for me is it's great to have a really good looking pair of uh, a six pack, but if it's not functional, mm. it's really pointless. Yeah. Um, so I, I've, I've started as I get older. I said because I need to, because obviously you know you want you want to move a better as you get older. Um, yes. Functionality and tr functional training has become a bit more um, prevalent in my in my in my training. Yeah, I think that uh, that's a really important point that you've raised. I mean, I, I, mean, I started my jiu-jitsu journey at 45. I'm close to 50 now, yeah. um, and I must admit that I, I, certainly my physical fitness is in the last 10 years. I always say that I'm younger now than when I was 30. I mean, at 30, I weighed 105 kilograms and I weighed 88. You know, um, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. no, I totally agree with you on that. But the po important point that you've raised quite a few times now is about functional. You know, the way you look, listen, it's nice to look nice. Okay, I, I get it. Absolutely. Uh, no, I mean, absolutely. I, I've got teenage sons and that kind of drives their behavior completely. Uh, yes. And I try and drum into them. But does this stuff work? Is it helping you perform better um, as a human or as a water polo player or as a JITS person? So sure. I'm really liking that function functionality side. 
And you also yeah. seem to be also talking about the TRX system. Um, and you said you don't use heavy weights, like body weight is enough. I mean, if you use your body weight um, correctly, uh, technically correctly, and you do the exercises, that seems to be yeah. enough. So what is your, what is your view on that? Yeah, so I've had, look, I'm, I'm 45 now. Um, and I, 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 I look, and we all like to look good. At, you know, I'm a personal trainer. It's what I do. I can't, I can't be out of shape and look terrible and then still try to convince people to train with me or that I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I train sometimes twice a day and I still do jits sometimes, depending obviously before the lockdown, sometimes up to three times a day, which, which was quite tough on my body. Yes. But the thing is that functional, you know, I can use my clients as an example. Um, I've got a lot of guys that come to me, uh, men who are CEOs. Um, mm -hmm. I've got housewives. I've got, um, I've got teenagers that come to me. Um, you know, and as, as you get to know people over a period of time, you form great relationships, great friendships. And you have to start understanding what people want and what people need. I've had, I've had incredibly high powered individual come to me saying to me that they just want to stay fit and strong because they want to see their grandchildren one day Yes. Uh, you know, and be able to play with them when they're 75. Um, I've got teenagers who come to me who, who just want to build muscle. They just want to get as big as possible. And then you're going to kind of explain to them what that entails and the, 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 the nutrition that's that involved. And suddenly when people start to see what, what is involved, it becomes quite a, it becomes a, it becomes quite a journey for everybody. So yeah. we've, what we've had is our clients, especially for us, our clients online, they've really managed to stay um, on track. And what I've discovered for myself is that, you know, I enjoy training at a gym. I enjoy training, um, having equipment and stuff like that. But obviously at home, I've had to use what, what is available. And yeah, I bought some weights home from the gym, some heavy weights, some kettlebells, and I've had to do a lot of, like I said, with the TRX and using kettlebells as well, kettlebell mm -hmm. swings, and I'm using them for chest presses, whatever. And I was really amazed at the intensity of the workouts I was able to get. Okay. Um, with, 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 with very little equipment. Yes. So the thing is, it's a bit of a mindset. You, you, you really can do a lot with very, very little. Yeah. Okay. I want to explore that further because that's for me, it goes oh. smack bang into the basics. Okay. So now we're all at home because um, we have yeah. to be, you've said you've got clients online and you've had to yeah, use sure. what's available. Okay. So sure. um, con taking that scenario into account, um, I've come to you as a client and said, okay, lockdown's happening in a week's time. I don't have a gym at home. Um, what are the basic things that I need to, to buy or purchase or have at home for you as Ren, my personal trainer to be able to give me the opportunity to, to um, train at the highest possible level. What, what equipment um, would you, would you recommend? Andy, I would recommend a TRX yeah. suspension system. If you've got a place where you can put it down and I definitely, definitely would recommend kettlebells. Um, I think I, 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 to be honest, I haven't, yeah, I haven't been a great fan of kettlebells. I, I, I've never really used them. I've never really trained with them, to be honest with yeah. you. You've never had to, I suppose. It's just in the last five weeks, I had them at the gym and I thought, and I thought yeah, because I had all the other stuff that I could play around with, mm. etc. And I bought them home, obviously, and I've started using them. I was just really blown away by, by their, their, their ability to really, to really push my body. Okay. So, for example, I can use an example. This morning, I did. Um, we've got a beautiful stretch of, of grass or garden behind our, um, our home here in, this, in our complex. And I did sprints. You know, I sprinted up. It's about a 100-meter sprint down and a 100-meter sprint up. So I would jog down and then sprint up for 100 meters. I would then do 30 kettlebell swings. I would do some push-ups. I would do some farmer's walks. I did five rounds of that just before mm -hmm. we had our meeting. And I felt fantastic um, after that. Um, so if anybody's going to simplify it, I would say push-ups. Yeah. Air squats, jumping squats, uh, jumping jacks. I do a lot of my clients have been doing a lot of jumping jacks and that type mm. of thing at home. But if you have access to equipment or can buy equipment, I would get a TRX and I would get a, uh, some kettlebells. And okay. I don't necessarily have to go too heavy because you can literally do anything. You can lie on the ground and use them to do chest presses. You can do dumbbell rows with them. You can do swings with them. You can do squats with them. It's, mm. They are just like you can do everything with them. 
Okay, I mean a really fantastic, a good, a good, um, a good investment. It sounds like. I mean, just get those Absolutely. And, and and learn. Definitely. I think the critical thing is and and is that, um, like all weighted equipment, it's important to have the technique right because um, you could hurt yourself, and that's where someone like you comes sure. in, where you can give guidance, and someone can film themselves and send you a video and say, "Am I doing this right?" And you can give them you give them the support that they need. Yeah, I've got uh, clients of mine that I obviously send products. Not a lot. Some of my clients are just not Skype people. Um, yeah, or they yeah. just, you know, they just, they just don't, they just don't, they just don't feel comfortable on it. So I, um, I obviously I write them their programs and I send it to them and then they will, um, they can film something and say, is this right? Um, hopefully I've taught them all well enough before we went into lockdown yeah. that they know what they're doing. But obviously yeah. they always chat to me and we, have, we stay in contact all the time. But when it comes to training, form and utilizing the right muscles and mm -hmm. feeling the proper contraction they have referred to it as a mind muscle connection and it sounds kind of like all out there and spiritually strange but it really is a thing if you can target the right muscle for the right with the right exercise and what you're trying to achieve it goes a long way to achieving your goals to mindlessly train or push weights whatever it might be that you're trying to do just mindlessly getting it getting doing it because you just want to get through it mm. for the sake of doing it I just think it's a waste of time and energy. I'd rather do a shorter session where I'm really focusing on what I'm trying to do mm -hmm. and really make sure that I'm working the muscles I want to work than trying to do an hour long session where I'm just not even, I'm just not tapping into my body. I think mm. once you're able to get into your, your uh, listen to your body and feel your own body and what it's, and, and, and try to understand what it's capable of doing and how to do it, I think it's quite a, it's, it's a really awesome experience. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting because I'm going to ask you another question because I've, I've had a skipping rope, like a really nice leather skipping rope. Yeah. Um, and I've started skipping. One of my, my yeah. personal challenges was by the time I was 50, I wanted to be able to skip like a boxer uh, just because it looks yes. cool. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and I that always plays a role in everything. It's got, something's <laughs> going to look cool as well. Otherwise, what's the point, right? No, I mean, let's be honest. Okay. So um, I've started skipping. So what is your opinion on skipping and, and incorporating it into a uh, training program? Oh, absolutely. Skipping is great. I mean, if you can do 10 to 20 minutes of skipping a day, I mean, mm -hmm. just in terms of calories and the muscles that are worked. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, skipping is really, really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would definitely include that in, for, for, in terms of metabolic conditioning and cardio. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, it's probably better. I, look, I, when I was younger, up until a few years ago, I enjoyed uh, doing a lot of running. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I ran a couple of, I've done, I've done a one half marathon and I've run a lot of 10, 15 Ks and I eventually mm -hmm. stopped after a couple of years. Um, I just, I just find that it's, 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 it's very taxing on the body. Yes. Uh, the joints, I should say, the joints mostly. I think there are very few naturally born runners out there who've just got the genetic abilities to run. Mm -hmm. um, so I enjoy doing things like skipping. Um, mm -hmm. I do sprints, like I said, um, but yeah, skipping is, is fantastic. And the skipping like 20 minutes straight or I mean, I've found a sort of hit program and I do 40 seconds on 20 seconds off and um, yeah. sort of cycles of um, four. And then I do that sort of five sets of that, you know, I mean, uh, and I must say That's that, perfect. yeah, the, the, um, I'm starting to get my coordination right. And that what, what, yeah. what the reason why I brought it up was because what I found with skipping is as soon as I moved from focusing on jumping over the rope, and acknowledging that my body naturally wants to not trip. I mean, your subconscious mind yes. keeps you oh, absolutely. Right. It wants so, to survive. And, yeah. So, so, so it naturally doesn't want to trip. And you started focusing no. on the rhythm in your wrists. Yes. I started getting better. Um, yeah. And and that's you, you that, see the, the thing is, uh, uh, Andy. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's, so so it's just that connection between mind body that you spoke about. Once I recognized that skipping i started getting better i mean listen i've got a long way to go but i'm definitely improving. training yeah. uh, i there are just days where i just don't feel like it and then i kind of have to and i suppose this goes back to motivation and just taking um just personal discipline yeah. where i drag my back to the gym or here i drag myself outside and i train and then i get into it and it, it becomes almost meditative for me yes um, I, I find that training exercising and pushing my body um, it gets it relaxes me it calms me down mm -hmm. otherwise i become quite a handful I'm, I'm quite energetic and quite hyper by nature mm -hmm. and i i one of the things i can say is 
that is why I talk about people getting into their minds, into their bodies. It's, it's, it's a fantastic experience coming out of a really intense training session where you've really felt your body working the way it mm. should. It's, it's quite, it's quite, um, you get quite elated from it. I suppose it's endorphins, you know, you feel yes. really good. Yeah. And that's one of the things I found with jiu-jitsu. I mean, jiu-jitsu is a, is a dangerous sport. Yes. Um, but I, you know, and the thing, funny thing about jiu-jitsu is, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm just a budding white belt, but what I've just discovered in my, my, my short journey is that it's, it's a very individual journey, but you require other people to, to mm. go on that journey, if that makes yeah. sense. And um, I've felt my most calm and my most relaxed after a really, really great jit session. Um, yes. I, I could be calm for hours, and it's, it's, it's almost meditative for me. And it sounds weird, because you're somebody's trying to strangle you and trying to, like, you know, arm bar you. But, you, you know, uh, when I come out of it, I just feel amazing because I kind of, you're kind of struggling with your own demons on the mat mm. and you're kind of struggling with your own body and what it can do and what it can't do while somebody yeah. else is trying to do the same but different. So for me, exercise, besides the physical, there's a lot of emotional and mental things that come out of it, you know, and yeah. not just for me, but I find for a lot of people. Yes. I think I mean, your description of jiu-jitsu, and, and by the way, just being a white belt is not the right description. You, you're on the mat. You're on the journey. No, and, I mean, absolutely. And, and um, you know, listen, I'm. Uh, there's no way I'll ever stop because what you've no, just de- what, what you've just described is um, is exactly how I feel. Um, you can arrive at the mat and with your with your friends because that's what they are. I mean, these people can literally oh, kill you, but but they don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And you could have had a tough day, and then you just get in touch with yourself. You, you, you know what, I've, this is a new word that I've been using, like you, you, you manage to commune with yourself. And the more in touch that you, you get with your body, the more flow that you have, the more connection you have yes. to the other person. And that, yeah. that um, experience on the mat doing jiu-jitsu, um, I now translate into my exercise and into work and all those yes. kind of things. Yeah. But, well, but it, it, it translates into your whole life, really. And yeah. It's fascinating. It's, yeah, it's, it's excellent. I'd actually like to, um, at some point, because, I mean, we're coming to the end of our, our chat because we've got limited time. Um, I'd like to explore your JITS journey um, and we can explore ours together at some to. other point. Um, Fantastic. But um, I think just just in in conclusion to those people that are listening to us, um, what what could, what would you like to give them just as the basics? What they should just focus on now as we all transitioning into this new world, this new unknown, this uncertainty that we have. What message would you like to give to people? And it could be uh, exercise related, jits related, life related, whatever whatever you'd like to share, so that that they don't feel alone. I just think that we need to realize that we aren't alone. Um, it, it can, I mean, I've had some really tough days where I've just, I've woken up and I'm just like, not swear on mine, but such, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm over this. I'm, I'm tired. And I just, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to know about this, you know, cause you worry about your business. You worry about your children that are stuck at home. It's a child. I should have a good daughter of 15. And, you know, then I kind of, I, I, I suppose, and you can say, I kind of get up, I get up, I get up, I, I'm an early riser by nature, and I show up. Yeah, yeah. And I do my exit, I do my training, and I take responsibility for the things that I can take responsibility for. There's a lot of stuff out there happening now that's just out of our control. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff that we can be responsible for. I can be responsible for my business online, and I can be responsible for my own health, wealth, and fitness. Mm. And I think what what's been great about this experience is that it's 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 I've realized that. We all have each other, ultimately, you know, and I've connected with friends and people online and we're still in touch and we still talk. And I think for now, it is what it is. Mm. And we just have to carry on. I think exercising, start off simply, man. If it's just going to be exercising, do the push-ups, do some sprints, um, do, do, your, do your, your skipping, um, do some air squats. It doesn't have to be anything intense. And you, if you create a small goal, you know, in every few days you build up. Some days you're not going to get it right, but it just keep consistently going at it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can talk about it next time. And nutrition plays a massive, massive role in that. But, you know, it just depends what you're trying to do. We're not all trying to look like bodybuilder, six-pack ripped people. We're mm-hmm. just trying to stay sane and pretty much healthy. And it doesn't take a lot to do that, really. Yeah. I think what I like what you said there is, is 
you just stick to the basics, push up, sit up, skipping. But the really, really powerful yeah. word there was consistency. Just consistently yeah, do it. Just, you just got to, you know, uh, I remember my, um, my lecture many years ago. He said, exercise is like putting money in a bank. Mm. You know, you earn a little bit of interest on it every day. Every, every workout session is like making a transaction into your bank account. And yeah. it would be the same with chips. You get a little bit better, a little bit better. Some days it goes a little bit back. Some days you eat a whole cake and you think, oh, God, I'm falling apart. But the next day you're back there and you just keep going at it. And you, you know, workouts, the thing about exercise, and I've struggled with some of my clients, is it's not exciting. It's not, it's not fascinating. And people think they need to do the different stuff every day to keep it interesting. It's not about that. Get in touch with your body with the simple stuff. Feel your body work. Get into your mind. Get into your emotions. And just let it all go and train. And you won't need to do all these crazy different things every day to keep yourself entertained while you train. Training is not supposed to be fun all the time it's supposed to push you and push you out of your comfort zone yeah you know yeah. and the thing is that's the most important thing so to saying what i'm hearing you say is find the joy in that find the joy absolutely in being in uncomfortable just, absolutely yeah absolutely and you know we, we uh, you know i actually quite enjoy the fact that i don't have a, a tv in front of me at you know the gym that i would yeah. train at sometimes we can sit and mind the cycle on the bike for 40 minutes I really had to get in touch with my body and learn new things about my own body. Some things I was making mistakes with, etc. Yeah. But I've kept it very simple. And the thing is, just shut up. Enjoy what you're able to do with your body. Yeah. You know, and the fact that your body is working and it's functioning and it's an amazing... You know, the, the, the human body is the only machine that actually gets better the more you use it. And the more <laughs> you use it, the stronger it gets, the fitter it gets. It's the only machine that does it in the whole world. I like that. I think that's a good place for us to, to conclude. Okay, brilliant. And thanks for your time. Cheers, Cheers. Mr. Thanks. Chat soon. Okay, yes. The views and opinions expressed by this podcast are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Three Seconds Ahead. Any content provided by our authors are of their opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything. While authors strive for accuracy, we can and will be wrong at times, as any honest person will have to admit.